So about two years ago, I did a video on a bunch of games by the organization known as PETA, and to no surprise by anyone, they were all pretty terrible. It's been quite a while now, and a lot of you seem to really like that video. So much so that it is the best performing video I've ever uploaded. Well, my buddy Ant Dude suggested I do a follow-up to that video, but as I remember, the well of games on PETA's website was pretty dry after the first one. But alas, I decided to take on the challenge and see if I could milk what's left of the games on PETA's site. And as fate would have it, aside from a couple I didn't cover last time, there's actually a few new games up there. L lucky me. And before any of you say anything, I know this is a thing, let's, let's move on. Okay, so this first one is literally just burger time with a slightly different skin. I'm not sure if this is even legal to do. If you're unfamiliar with this game, the object is to climb ladders and navigate through the stage putting burgers together by walking over the various ingredients, all while avoiding enemies. Which in this case are farm animals for some unexplained reason. I'm guessing it's to fit the theme, but having them be enemies you need to avoid makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Anyway, much like Burger Time, it's an arcade-style game, so it's very monotonous. Unlike Burger Time, though, the collision detection is complete ass, and sometimes it's a huge pain to walk onto a platform from one of the ladders. You pretty much have to be pixel-perfect, and it's pretty goddamn infuriating when you're trying to avoid getting caught by enemies and you get fucking stuck for no goddamn reason. If you lose, the game over screen tells you all the negative shit that fast food is responsible for. But if you win, you get, uh, this cute little cutscene. I'm not really sure what this game is trying to accomplish when both winning and losing yields negative endings. The next one is a mobile game called Paintball Hero, and right out of the gate I'm wondering what the hell paintball has to do with animal cruelty. Also, either I'm insane or this young MC's bust a move that plays in the background. Let's try to do what those ladies tell us Get shot down cause you're overzealous Play hard to get females, get jealous So according to this game's intro, we've infiltrated a factory farm and we have to shoot the enemies because they apparently ignore animal cruelty Because of this, we need to mercilessly assault them with eh, ed edu education paintballs You progress in a linear path rescuing animals that look like they're straight out of Minecraft and attacking enemies along the way the goal is to go as far as you can for a high score before misstepping and falling off the map. At least that's what I'm assuming because as far as I know, the level doesn't end. I can't be sure though because controlling this thing is a fucking nightmare. You swipe left, right, or forward to navigate, but the game is set at an isometric view which is extremely disorienting and I could not for the life of me get used to it. Eventually I just got frustrated and stopped playing. You're probably gonna see a pattern here if I'm being honest. Okay, so this one is surprisingly not total garbage. It's a beat-em-up game that basically looks like River City Ransom. You play as professional MMA fighters to take down animal abusers. Before the game starts though, there's a nice little disclaimer telling you that you probably shouldn't actually punch strangers in the face. There's three characters to choose from, but I don't watch MMA and I have no idea who any of them are, so I'm gonna just go with the first one because we have the same birthday. That's, uh, that's a little jarring. Wow, they're, uh, they're not even gonna hide the River City Ransom thing, huh? The controls are pretty simple. Arrow keys to move and ASDF for various attacks. You fight your way through rooms covered in splattered blood where animal experimentation and abuse is going on, maiming everyone who dares to cross your path and saving animals who are locked up in cages. Assault rifles are no match for your fists, I guess. After fighting your way through all the levels, it comes to a head and you have to fight off an onslaught of doctors, scientists, and army men in an MMA octagon. After you win, you get congratulated on the beach for some reason with a congregation of animals who all probably have no business being anywhere near each other. And this is still bothering me to look at. Your reward for beating the game and saving all the animals? Getting to watch a fucking animal testing video. That's uh, that's your prize. You earned it. So here we have Bloody Burberry, the Fur Fighters. I don't actually know what Burberry is, but from reading the introduction, it's safe to assume that it's some kind of clothing company that manufactures things made out of fur. It's probably the usual coats and purses and shit. Your goal in the game is to infiltrate the company's HQ and let them know what they're doing is wrong. That, uh, that'll show them. Even more ridiculous is the fact that you choose from one of three furry little animals as opposed to a human being who could communicate and speak words. Then again, if I was working at a company and a woodland critter barged into my office speaking complete sentences, I wouldn't assume I was sound-minded enough to make any kind of decision about anything. In any case, I'm gonna pick the raccoon, cause they're my fave. The goal in the first stage is to walk around a store spraying all the fur coats with red paint while avoiding security guards. That's it. The next stage is a runway where you need to hold up anti-fur signs in front of the runway models to convince them to stop wearing fur. 
Now, you may think that maybe they're just uninformed, but, uh, nope. Apparently, they're just too dumb to understand. I'm sensing some pettiness here. It doesn't even make any sense. Uneducated is one thing, but you're saying they're too fucking stupid. In which case, I'm not sure how holding up a sign is gonna help them grasp the concept of fur equals bad. I'm gonna go ahead and assume the person writing this isn't exactly a beauty queen. Anyway, this is a lot like the first stage, and you just need to avoid the guards. All right, last level is the same shit again, basically, so there's really no point in elaborating on it. PETA did draw a nice little interpretation of what Burberry CEO looks like, though, and if I were her, I'd probably sue for defamation. Here's another arcade-style game called Meat is Murder. The objective is to click each quarter of the screen to save the animals as they head towards spinning saw blades. There's also bombs, and I guess you aren't supposed to click them and just let them head into the blades, but nothing ever actually happened when I clicked, so I'm not sure what the point is. Eventually, big-ass animals pop in, and you have to click them multiple times to save them. As time goes on, the game actually gets pretty nerve-wracking, despite how monotonous it is. If you miss, blood splatters all over the place and you game over. The end screen then shows you the number of animals you managed to save under big letters saying death for no reason. I mean, there's a reason. You threw 80 animals at me at once, so that's on you. Anyway, like I said, this is an arcade style game, so just goes on forever while gradually increasing difficulty. It's just your average high score game. You know, it's kind of weird how some of these games try, albeit poorly, to send a message and inform people about animal cruelty, while the other ones just straight up make a silly game that conveys nothing to the player other than, oops, you killed a cow. This one's called Save the Sea Kittens, and I still can't figure out why. It's not even a game. It's one of those create-your-own-character things where you decorate it with random pre-made assets. There's a few different types of fish you can pick from. Ye yes I said fish. They are, indeed, referring to the fucking fish as sea kittens. I want to die. Anyway, I picked the swordfish, because swordfish are pretty neato. I gave it Hot Topic hair and a guitar. What the fuck is the point of this? This is a game by the people for the ethical treatment of animals. What is this supposed to teach anyone? That's right, kids, you wanna help out the animals? Start removing sea creatures from the ocean and dress them up like a fucking Barbie doll. So we've come to the cream of the crap. <laughs> no, but seriously, folks, this is a game that came out a while ago on PS4, but apparently it recently came out on Nintendo Switch. I wasn't aware of this at the time, so I'm gonna be looking at the PS4 version. And among all the PETA games that I've covered, this is the only one that's for an actual console. Luckily, it's free to download, so I didn't have to pay for it, because God knows I would have, and then I would have never been able to live with myself. This one's a doozy. Upon checking it out and watching the trailer on the PlayStation Store, I was shocked to see a familiar face among the people who were interviewed. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alexander Fasciani. This is, this is one collab I didn't think was happening today. In any case, let's get right to it. This game is basically ripping off The Binding of Isaac. Pretty... Pretty heavily. I'd discuss controls, but if you've played The Binding of Isaac, it's literally identical. Much like The Binding of Isaac, you navigate through a series of rooms a la The Legend of Zelda, only unlike the random nature of Isaac, this game's layout is all predetermined. Before getting sent into the dungeons, there's a list of different missions to choose from, each starting with some horrifyingly depressing and badly animated story exposition. I started off by going on a quest to save a killer whale. I don't really want to admit this, but this game is sort of fun. Almost. Don't get me wrong, I'm definitely making the best of a bad situation, and this game is by no means good, but after all the shit I've seen, this game definitely leans far more towards the side of harmless. It's still pretty monotonous, but it's entertaining enough to not make me want to blow my stupid brains out. There's a bunch of different weapons you can pick up along the way by destroying crates, but there's definitely an issue with balance here. Once you get a gun that's better than the rest, you're left to pretty much just use that one and avoid the rest. As much as you might want to experiment with the others, it just makes no logical sense to switch. You also pick up coins that I guess are used to buy things from the shop, but I didn't play far enough into it to actually find out. And let's be honest, it's not like any of you give a shit anyway. I don't think anyone's really looking for a critical, in-depth review of fucking Kitten Squad. Oh, by the way, I saved a dumbass whale. The next mission is to save this sheep or whatever. The setup for this one is even more gruesome than the whale one. Between the graphic visuals and the depressing music, it's creating quite the dissonance in my head when it throws me back into gameplay of a fucking dungeon crawling cartoon kitten fighting off robots with a laser gun. Now this stage is just more of the same, ramping up the difficulty. I'm assuming this is how the rest of the game goes as well. Not terrible for a quick romp, but it's easy to lose interest, so once I game over, that's all she wrote. I guess we won't be rescuing any sheep today. And with that, I have exhausted my patience for uh, any of this shit that I've been doing for like the last 10 minutes. So, uh, I'm done. Goodbye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. If you liked it and you haven't seen the first video I did on PETA games, well, there it is right there for you to check out. And if you want to see more of what I do, click subscribe and now that stupid bell so hopefully one day, maybe, just maybe, I'll pop up in your sub feed. I also have a Patreon if you want to help me eat food.